Good afternoon, folks. It's 4.13 p.m. 4.13 p.m., and this is the Word for the Day, Part 3, for November 13, 2019. The Word for the Day, Part 3, for November 13, 2019. Let's go right into the Word. And last night, yesterday evening, on November 13, 2019, at 6.30 p.m., forsaking all others. So forsaking all others, that's the message for today. It's been found in a lot of different books here, at least 20 different books. Luke 14.33, Jeremiah 2.13, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, Matthew 10 and 37, Ephesians 5, uh, 5.25, verse 33, Matthew chapter 19, verses 6 and 8, Matthew 12, verse 36, John 14 and 6, Hebrews 13 and 5, Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 35, key verse 26, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15, Hebrews 12 and 2, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Verses through one, verse, Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13, the love chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Acts 2.42. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 1 through 26. 1 Timothy 5, 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. John 3.16 and 17, the most popular verse in the Bible. Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 through 9. 1 Kings 18, 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. And finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 15 through 17. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter... I'm sorry, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 33. Luke 14 and 33. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot... Be my disciple. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Jeremiah 2 and 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Hebrews 10 and 25. Nor forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting our another, exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Matthew 10 and 37. Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 33. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 Husband love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Ephesians 5 and 33 Nevertheless let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Matthew 19 6 and 8 Matthew chapter 19 verse 6 So then they are no longer two but one flesh therefore what God has joined together let no man separate. Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Matthew 12 and 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. John 14 and 6. Jesus says, uh, chapter, uh, John chapter 14 verse 6 Jesus said to him I am the way, the truth, and the life no one comes to the Father except through me the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 Hebrews 13 and 5 let your conduct be without covetousness he be content with such things as you have for he himself has said I will never leave you nor forsake you the book of Luke chapter 14 verses 1 through 35 key verse 26
Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 35. Now as it happened, as he went into the house of one of the rulers, of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, that they watched him closely, and behold, there was a certain man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent. And he took him, and he healed him, and let him go. Then he answered them, saying, Which of you, having a donkey or an ox that has fallen to a pit, will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him regarding these things. So he, so he told a parable to those who were invited, and he noted how they chose the best place to say to them, When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and come and say to you, Give place to this man. And then he began with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when he invited you comes and he may say to you, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. Forever he who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And he also said to him, invited him, When you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. And when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind, and you'll be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resur resurrection of the just. Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to them, I have bought a piece of ground, I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married my wife, and therefore cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those, none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be a disciple. For which of you, intending the bell tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest, after he has laid the foundation, and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. For what king, going to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with ten thousand to meet him, who comes against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. Deuteronomy 31 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. 1 John 1 and 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us all from unrighteousness. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15 They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, upon the way of Balaam the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 Hebrews 2, he, Hebrews, I'm sorry, Hebrews 12 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Test all things, hold fast what is good. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13, the love chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 through 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy 
and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains but not have love, I am nothing. And though I stole all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love is long suffering and kind. Love does not envy, love does not berate itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known, also am known. And now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these, is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. As and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42. Acts 2 and 42. And they continued steadfastly, steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 1 through 26. Isaiah 3, 1 through 26. Judgment on Judah and Jerusalem. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stock and the store, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the diviner and the elder, the captain of fifty and the honorable man, the counsel and the skillful artesian and the expert enchanter, I give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. The people will be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child will be insolent toward the elder, and the base toward the honorable. When a man takes hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, You have clothing, you be our ruler, and let these ruins be under your power. And that day he will protest, saying, I cannot cure your ills. I cannot cure your ills, for in my house is neither food nor clothing. Do not make me a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem has stumbled and Judah has fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to broke the eyes of his glory, to look on the countenance witness against them, and they declare their sin is Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought evil upon themselves. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. O oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. Oppression looks for condemned. The Lord stands up to plead and stands to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the elders of his people and his princes. For you have eaten up the vineyard, the plunder of the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people and guarding the faces of the poor? Says the Lord of hosts. More of the Lord says because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes walking and missing as they go, making a jingling with their feet. Therefore the Lord therefore the Lord will strike off a scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover their secret parts. And that day the Lord will take away the finery, the jingling anklets, the scarves, and the crescents, the pendants, the bracelets, and the veils, the headdresses, the leg ornaments, and the headbands, the perfume boxes, the charms, and the rings, the nose jewels, the festal apparel, and the mantles, the outer garments, the purses, and the mirrors, the fine linen, the turbans, and the robes. And so it shall be, instead of a sweet smell, there will be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope. Instead of well-set hair, baldness. Instead of a rich robe, a guarding of sackcloth. And branding instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword, and your mighty in the war. Her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit on the ground. 1 Timothy 5 and 4 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 4, 
If any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents, for this is good and acceptable before God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. John 3, 16 and 17. Most popular verses in the Bible. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Matthew 19, verses 3 through 9. Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 through 9. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife just for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not men separate. Then they said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because the hardness of your hearts permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual morality, and marries another, commits adultery. And whoever marries her, is divorced, commits adultery. 1 Kings 18 and 18. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 18. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, and that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and have followed the Baals. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 17. Nehemiah 9 and 17. They refused to obey, and they were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them, but they hardened their necks, and in their rebellion they appointed a leader to return to their bondage. But you are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundance and kindness, and not forsake them. Okay, folks and family, finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 15 through 17. 1 Corinthians 7, 15 through 17. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart, a brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? All right, folks and family, thank you for your time. Thank you for the past 18 minutes. This is the word for today, part three, for November 13th, 2019. The word for today, part three, for November 13th, 2019. Everyone have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe out there. God bless you all. God loves you, and so do I very much. Take care of yourselves. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. This is your day of salvation and your day of decision. I thank you for your time. Have a great day. Have a blessed day and week. I'll talk to you again later. Part 4 is up next. Part 4 will be next after this video. Thank you and goodbye.